Good morning, learners. Good morning, educators. My name is Samakali Muilwa, and I am a geography teacher at Intermediate and Secondary School in Botsabelo. Today, we are going to do the preparation for the mid year examination that will be rescheduled for the next term. So, we'll start firstly by looking at the synoptic weather map, looking at the short objective questions. Now, remember that we are going to look at the most important aspects that we are using in the study of the synoptic weather map. And then we, number one, we have the isobars. Remember that when the isobars are far apart from one another, we say that we have gentle pressure gradient, therefore we have high pressure, high pressure cells. Remember also that the high pressure cells are also associated with clear skies, therefore when there are gentle pressure gradient or when the isobars are far apart from one another, we are going to have clear skies and therefore no precipitation. Isobars also, when you say that the isobars are very close to one another, we are going to have the steep pressure gradient. And the steep pressure gradient means that we have the greater wind speed and then they are also associated with low pressure systems. In the low pressure systems, we are, we are saying that they are associated with heavy rains, therefore there is going to be an over and overcast. Now we are looking also at number two, the high pressure systems, which are the anti-cyclones. Remember in the anti-cyclones we are looking also at their positions in relation to the continent and how they affect the, the weather. Remember that there we have three anti-cyclones in South Africa. We have the St. Helena anti-cyclone, which is found on the western part of the continent. We also have the continental anti-cyclones, which is found in the highlands or in the interior of the continent as well as the Mauritius anticyclone which is found in the eastern part of the continent and is also known as the South Indian anticyclones. The third one we are looking at the low pressure systems. The, uh, the low pressure systems <coughs> are nothing else but the, the cyclones. They appear on the synoptic weather map. Now if so, they are, what is their impact on the environment? Now, remember that we said earlier that the low pressure systems are associated with heavy, with heavy rains. Now, we'll also be looking at their impact on the environment as well as their impact on the, on the human activities. Number four, the synoptic weather maps also have what we call the weather, the weather stations. The weather stations shows us the, shows us the elements of weather such as what? The temperatures dew point temperatures, wind direction, wind speed in knots, the type of precipitation as well as the cloud, the cloud cover. And then last but not least, it shows us the time, which is the date and the time that if it is shown on the map to help us to determine the season represented by the synoptic weather, weather map. And then also, we are, question number 1.2 will be on the valley climate, short objective questions. Remember that when you're talking about the microclimate of the valleys, we are talking about the effect of the slope aspect. Number two, we are looking at the development of anabatic as well as catabatic winds, the inversions, frost pockets, and radiation fog. We are also going to look at the influence of local climates on human activities such as settlements as well as farming. And then number three, Tropical cyclones. Remember that we said that uh, we have the isobars. Now the isobars, when the isobars are closer to one another, they represent low pressure systems. Now the, one of the examples of the low pressure systems is tropical, tropical cyclones. Number one, you have to study the general characteristics of tropical cyclones. In the general uh, characteristics of the, uh, of the of the tropical cyclones, one will we can easily uh, make the definition of tropical, tropical cyclones. Number two, we are looking at the areas where tropical cyclones develop or where tropical cyclones forms. Number three, we are looking at the conditions that are necessary for the formations of the tropical cyclones. Remember, in the conditions that are necessary for the formation of tropical cyclones, we are looking at the things like uh, uh, the, the, the presence of Coriolis force, uh, the sea surface temperatures must be warmer than 28 degrees Celsius. Yes, ne? and then we are looking at also the stages in the development of tropical cyclones. We are also going to look at the tropical cyclones and their associated weather, weather patterns. 
looking at the reading and interpreting tropical cyclones on the synoptic weather map as well as the, on, as well as the, on the satellite on the satellite image. Remember now when you're looking at the tropical cyclones, you will see that the tropical cyclones on the synoptic weather map, they appear on the eastern part of the continent and then in the mature stage they have an S-like an S like shape which represented the eye of what? Of the tropical cyclone. We are also going to look at the impact of the tropical cyclones on human activities and on the environment. Remember that we said that the tropical cyclones are accompanied by heavy rains and gale force winds. So what could be the impact of gale force winds on the environment and on human activities? What could be the, the impact of tropical cyclones on human activities because of what? Because of the heavy rains. Now you are going to study that. And then we are also going to look at the strategies that can be used to minimize the impact of tropical cyclones on human activities and on the on the environment, right? The heat, heat islands. Remember when we're talking about the heat islands, we are talking about what? We are talking about the urban heat islands. Now we are talking about the differences in temperatures between what? Between the rural areas as well as the urban areas. Now, reasons for the differences between urban as well as the rural climate. Now, when you're looking at the reasons, we go straight to what? We go straight to the urban areas. We are looking at the artificial surfaces. We are looking at what we are looking about the we are talking about the transport we are talking about the overpopulation that increase the temperatures in the in the urban areas now we are talking also about the causes and the effects of the urban heat urban heat island now the pollution dome what is the pollution dome what are the causes of the pollution dome and what could be the effects of the pollution pollution dome in the heat islands also you, you have to study the strategies that that could be used to reduce the urban heat island on, on, the urban, on the urban areas. Coming also to the berg winds. What are the berg winds? Remember in grade 11 we did what we call the fawn winds. So the fawn winds are also known as the berg winds in South Africa. Now when we have, when we have experienced the berg winds in South Africa, we experienced the berg winds in South Africa during the winter, during the winter months. Now how are they formed? They are formed when there is a high pressure over the land. Now that high pressure should be the continental anti-cyclones as well as the low pressure over, over the sea. Now when we have the combination of the two, they lead straight into the, the berg winds. Now the, the winds will blow from the interior, which is the high pressure towards the, towards the seas. Warm air descends over the plateau now it reaches the coast as warm and dry dry wind. Why warm and dry wind? Because they blow from the land into, into the sea. Remember that they are descending. So when they descend, they lose, they lose moisture. Now what could be the dangers? The dangers would be, would be felt fires. Now you're looking at the dangers from where? From the human activities. We are looking at the dangers of felt fires in the, on, the, on the environment. Now how will the wind stop? Cold front has to has to move has to move over. Now the drainage uh, drainage basins that will be question number question number two. We are looking at the short objective questions. Now the short objective questions in this regard, you have to. It, it's either the IPS uh, match the column, the IPS label. They can also appear as multiple, multiple choice questions. Now we are looking at the most important concepts such as the river mouth, the river source, the catchment area, water table, tributaries, watersheds, interfluve, as well as the cone confluence. Also looking at the drainage patterns. Now remember when we are talking about the drainage patterns, we are talking about how the drainage or how the rivers are arranged. Now they are also influenced by what? They can be influenced by the underlying rock rock structure. Number one, we will be looking at the dendritic pattern. You must know that one. Trellis pattern, radial pattern, centripetal pattern, parallel uh, pattern, as well as deranged pattern. So how many river patterns do we have? We have seven river patterns. Coming to the next one, we are also going to look at the river capture. The river capture, which is also known as the stream piracy. Now we have to st study the concepts of abstractions as well as the river capture 
and then also the features that are associated with river, per, uh, river capture or stream piracy will be as follows. The capture stream, captured stream, wind gap, misfit stream, watershed as well as the elbow of an elbow of capture. Now also we will be looking at the fluvial landforms. In the fluvial landforms we will be talking about the rapids. You have to study the rapids. You have to study the waterfalls, you have to study the meanders, you have to study the oxbow lakes, you have to study the meanders cars, you have to study braided streams, you have to study deltas, you have to study the, the levees. Now, the last one of the theory will be the catchment and river management. Now, we'll be looking at the importances of managing the catchment areas and drainage basins. Remember, when we were doing it in the last term, we said that uh, South Africa lacks most of the waters. So it is very much important for us to manage uh, the catchment areas as well as the drainage basin so to have sufficient water for people to and animals to survive. We'll also be looking at the impact of people on catchment areas as well as the drainage basins. Also look at the case studies. Please read the case studies on catchment as well as the drainage basins. Answer those questions that are found on your, on your, on your textbooks that you have on your, on your schools. Now, question number three will be based on geographical skills and techniques. We'll be having map skills and calculations. In calculations, you can study map distance, area, gradient, vertical exaggeration, magnetic bearing, as well as magnetic declination. And then number two on geographical skills and technique, you have to look at the map application and interpretation. Now you have to look at the climate. In the climate, remember, you can also look at the latitudinal position of South Africa. You can also look at the slope aspect of so in South Africa. And then we look at it also the geomorphology. In the geomorphology, you can also look at the types of the rivers. You can also look at the uh, drainage uh, patterns, and et cetera. And then as well as the settlement that could be incorporated into the paper or the question three of geographical skills and techniques. And then last but not least, we are also going to look at the geographical information, information systems. So starting from tomorrow, I think tomorrow by 12 o'clock in the noon, each and every school will receive the, the questions as well as the, the notes based on the scope that we, that we have. That will be... All for, all for today until we meet again next time.